but we allowed ourselves to have a foundation to our relationship. So no mm -hmm. matter what, we always know, like, we have this core value, and that's just, you know, our, our belief in God and, you know, following following his ways and everything like that. I'll never forget. That was one thing that was, like, clicked. There was this linebacker. He had, like, this full, just gold, luscious beard and long hair just flowing out the hair. Yeah. He was, like, 6'3", just a big just dude. Huge, yeah. huge, And I was like, yo, this is different they had me at receiver and i'm oh shit. yeah and i was like Yo, I, it was different yeah you sold a ps5 to me a khalifa yeah, yeah so oh, that then, is crazy all yeah. your shit lease bitch, and you paying notes on that shit, good credit have an ass bitch. What is up with you guys? It is your boy Jay. We is back with another banger episode, another year of doing Everybody Hates Jabber. Um, and this is like a great way to start it off. And I appreciate everybody who's been rocking with us, everybody who's been tuned in. This is about to be a dope year. We got a lot of great stuff planned for you guys. Lots of giveaways that we're going to be doing and other stuff. Uh, we just gave away two tickets to the Drake and J. Cole concert coming up. So that'll be super sick and lots of more stuff coming up for you guys. But today we got a super banger guest with 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 the uh, with the team today. Uh, we got my boy Zayvon here today. Yep. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you guys may not know him, uh, but for the ones that do, you already know how my boy's rocking. So go ahead and shout out, man. Tell the people how you're feeling today. All right. Uh, so first and foremost, my name is Zayvon. You can find me on Instagram at Zayvon Griffin. And, um, you know, I'm thinking that we're coming out here talking about credit today. So, yeah. you know, what I do is uh, uh, help people get, you know, from a situation where they either have bad or subpar credit and uh, help them get in a situation where it's 700 plus and they go get approved for the things that they need in life. Yeah. So credit is essential. And um, that, that's a major topic that I help with. Right, right. So who would you say that, like, you are? Like, what? who is Zayvon and, and where does your story kind of start? Man, so, like, my, where does my story start? Or, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. as far as, like, from where? From, like, pretty much, like, growing up and stuff. Like, you know, where were you born? Where were you raised at? Stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm born, I'm originally born from Fayetteville, Arkansas. So okay. that's about, or from Tulsa, I'm not sure, but from Oklahoma City, where I'm coming from, it's, like, three and a half hours from here. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I was born and raised. And at 15, I moved out here to Oklahoma. Uh, to 2015 Lawton. or at age 15? It was, like, 2016. is my sophomore year of oh, high okay. school. I, I moved you. out to Lawton, Oklahoma. It's, like, a it's like a small town, military. Uh, that's, that's really all people know for is military, right. uh, Fort Sill. So I, I moved you. out there, sophomore year. Uh, but anyways, back back to Arkansas. So yeah, growing up, all I really did was sports. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all I was really uh, familiar with, either between basketball, football, um, you know, a little bit of other sports here and there. But those two were my main focus, uh, my main focus points. So that's all I grew up knowing. And then uh, throughout high school, uh, made a name for myself once I moved out to Oklahoma as far as where I was from, for, yeah. for football mainly, yeah. and then went to college. Uh, played football out here, uh, out in Oklahoma City. Got you. And then that's kind of how I ended up in Oklahoma City. Football right. didn't work out as expected. Yeah. Uh, but I knew I didn't want to go back home because where I'm coming, where I came from, Lawton is kind of like a it's a small town where yeah. there's not a whole lot going on. Yeah. It's if like, you've ever been to Lawton, they, they know what you mean. <laughs> you've they been know. to Lawton before? I've been through Lawton and stuff, and what'd I know you, a lot of people from Lawton. What do you think? Of, what do you think of Lawton? I mean, it just seems like a <laughs> ghost town. Not necessarily yeah. a ghost town, but just like one of those small towns where there's not really like a whole lot of stuff there to do. There's you know? not at all. And yeah. so that was my main thing was like I knew I didn't want to go back there. Yeah. So I had to make something shake here in Oklahoma City. And that's Facts. what I did. So Type shit. Um, as far as like, you know, the giving a description to who <clears throat> I am. Yeah. Um, I have a fiance. We just, we just got engaged. And so I have nice. two, I have two little bro. ones. And so that that's my main focal point, you know, of, of course. But, yeah. you know, business, I would say, and just uh, business is my second main focus as well. So just right. really like I would say um, what people know me for is business and entrepreneurial uh, yeah. things as far as like for people who actually know me. Right. But my main focus is, you know, family, making sure family, that they're yeah. good. And, for, you know, in sure. order to do that, the business got to be running as well, yeah, too. Yeah. So, yeah. So what about like your your family, like your mom and dad? Were they like you said that it was like mainly military? Were they like military and stuff, too? Nah, so they were split up. I don't ever remember them being together as long okay. as I was raised. I got you. Um, so my dad, he lived, uh, growing up, he was kind of, you know, here and there, but he he's the one that moved to Oklahoma. And at oh, the okay. time, I was with my mom in Arkansas. Right. And so my, on my dad's side, a lot of our family's military, but my, my father himself, he's not. So then got you. That, he just moved out there because that's where a lot of, a lot of our family was at. I got and you. So that's how I ended up out there. Do you got brothers and sisters and stuff too? I got one brother, but he lived, now they live out, but well, they live by the border, like El Paso, Texas. Damn, so, really? Yeah, he, yeah, he's 12. Uh, and um, so other than that, like I never really grew up around like, um, I I grew up for the most part as like an only child. I grew up I got you. till I was like ten years old. My mother 
just the only only no sibling, just the only child. Yeah. Then my brother came into the picture, and then I shortly after that, I moved to Oklahoma, and then I'm my dad's only son. So yeah, for the most part, grew up as the only child. So like with the with you like having a lot of military background in your family and stuff, did, was that ever like something that you thought about doing or wanted to do? Nah, not at all. <laughs> no, how come? I do, uh, <laughs> no, it, it's I I have complete respect for the people that do it. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, but I just knew that wasn't for me. Uh, to me, it's kind of like. From my perspective, I didn't ever want to get stuck in one thing. Yeah. And I feel like that's what happens a lot of times with people yeah. in the military. And it's just like, there was, there's so much stuff to do and so much like, I feel like with the lifestyle that I've created now, like I have freedom to go up, you know, go out and yeah. do whatever it is that I want to do and things like that. So that was more so what I wanted. There's nothing wrong with it. Like, yeah, again, right, respect right. to everybody that's in it, but for it just sure. wasn't for me. <laughs> Did you ever have like family that tried to persuade you to do it? I would more so say it wasn't family. And yeah. you, you would think so because my family's military. Right. But it was more so like, outer people because it's weird like I, I would say growing up people always told me how to old soul yeah so always connected and had i don't want to say deep but lengthy conversations with older people well, so old, as they yeah. got to yeah as they as i talked to more older people yeah you'd be 12 you know, years old sitting there talking to the old man on the block. So, yeah, i mean Mr. not gonna Jenkins. lie since i was young i've been always talked to older people yeah um to this day right. i don't know what it is but anyways so yeah I, I caught myself talking to a lot of older men um, just, you know, having different conversations and then, you know, as they get to see, you know, who I am, where I come from and things like that, they always try to like push military into like onto me. Like, yeah, they try to, oh, yo, here's the play for military. You can go yeah. in there for like two or three years. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but like, you know, file an injury or something like that. Get some type of yeah, disability. Get out of there. You yeah. good. I'm like, yo, that's too much. I don't want to do all yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So it, it is kind of a nice, I mean, when you think about it, it's like, dang, like, you know, especially if you're young and then you yeah. do go and like. You do like have like whatever they do to do what right. they do, and then you're like, hey, you know what I'm saying? You leave, <laughs> and then now you're like 23 years old, and you got like a couple thousand dollars right. coming to you for the rest of your life, you know? It sounds good, but they see a lot of stuff, man. That is true. They see a lot that of stuff. That is true. And a lot of those people are like, they deserve that shit, even if they did just like a couple years. Exactly. You know? So. Yeah, it just wasn't for me, man. Especially, like, ones that were, like, deployed and stuff like that. Did See, I wouldn't any, even want that. Nah, did you ever hear any, like, crazy military stories from your family or anything? I can't say I've really ever heard, like, crazy military stories. Yeah. Like, as far as in, like, seeing somebody, you know, yeah. die or something like that in front yeah. of them. I don't even know if I should say that. <laughs> nah, yeah, you can say whatever, <laughs> oh, okay. bro. <laughs> but um, outside of that, uh, nah, not really any crazy stories. Yeah. It's just as far as, like, outside of being located in a certain country or location for so long. Yeah. Um, nothing really crazy that I've came right. across. Right. So speaking of family and stuff, too, like you said, you just got in engaged. You said you have two kids now, right? Yeah, you have two. I have a, a two-year-old turning three this year. Yeah. And then we just had one that just turned five months uh, the end of this previous month. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 22. 22. Yeah, You're about yeah. to have a three-year-old. So how was that like whenever you kind of found out you that you were about to have that first one? Because that's kind of young at like, yeah. what? How old were you? 19 or 20? I was 19, 20, 19? 20. Shoosh. Man. I know you was probably a little bit scared, huh? Or what? What was that initial response like? Man, I'm, I can't even lie. Like the initial response, um, it's crazy. Like yeah. it was kind of like there's no way. I was, I was in denial. I was in complete denial. Yeah. I, I can't even lie about it. Yeah. But it was more so like towards the, the middle and towards the end of the, the her pregnancy yeah uh, it, it, it just kicked in it was like look I, I gotta I gotta do what I gotta do I gotta yeah. just own up to it because at the end of the day like I'm not the type of person to uh avoid a back down or avoid anything so it's yeah. like I, I you know we we did yeah, that made so the I, now yeah, you got it. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so I got I gotta take care of this yeah. or take take care of business so um but what I always tell people is like having a child like there's really no in between it'll either make somebody or it'll break somebody yeah like you can't be halfway in as a parent in my yeah. opinion yeah and so um, I it's brought complete joy and to me it's brought me more purpose yeah because at, yeah. at the time it was more so I was just I was just focused on myself I didn't really have anybody else to like um, really have to look out for yeah yeah look out be for but for yeah and stuff. being having to be responsible like being a uh, the head of a house and, you yeah. know and all that yeah uh, it gives my it, it drives me more day by day yeah and uh it just it feels good doing it you yeah. know setting an example and, and that's a beautiful thing too bro because this day and age man there's there's it's like a declining thing where people are you know what i'm saying wanting to be that person you know yeah. what i mean even though the, some people they may be in their kid's life but it doesn't drive them to do anything better you know like right. they just have a kid and they're just kind of floating through life like with their family, you know, and as long as you're making it, you're making it, you know, but yeah. a lot of people don't have that extra drive. They don't, you know what I'm saying, use that as an extra drive to go harder and stuff, which right. I feel like, I don't know. I mean, I don't have no kids, but I feel like that would kind of do the same thing for me, but yeah. who knows? I ain't saying you, you know? ain't got to have kids to be That's <laughs> to facts. Find no, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah, you don't got, I, I, I tell anybody right now, like, you don't go out and get kids if you're not ready for yeah, it. Yeah, just trying to be like, but, I need a purpose in life. <laughs> let me just get a kid real quick. No, no, that's, that's definitely not the way. That's not the way. 
<laughs> but you know, if it, at the end of the day, if you have a kid yeah. and it wasn't the plan, you, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, and, for and, sure. You know, you never know; it could be the purpose that you were missing. So, how were you like, kind of scared to like tell your family whenever you found out that you were that you were expecting? Or, bro, I didn't even tell. I didn't even tell my my lady was the one that had to tell my family. I really, man, it was. I had the <laughs> feeling of like, yo, my family is gonna be completely like. Uh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know how they were gonna look at me. Yeah. And so I, I was very. Uh, I don't want to say embarrassed, but I didn't know how to go about it. Yeah. I was. I never had to have that conversation before. Of course. Yeah. Um, it was, it was just, it was an odd. So how long did it take time. before the, y'all finally ended up telling him? Was she already showing or? She was definitely showing. Yeah. Really? But me and her at the time, like, cause we're, it, we're still together. Right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, at the time me and her were off and on, like I was just, I was completely lost on what I wanted to do. I got you. But then once we came, you know, once we kind of, you know, made things clear, like we're going to make this work. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I still wasn't able to tell my parents, so she she yeah. told them, and that's how they found out. Yeah. What they what was that response like from them? It was completely different than what I expected. Yeah. It was more so like you know they they were definitely shocked. Yeah. They were they were, I would say the only thing they were not disappointed, but uh, they wish I would have done differently is tell them just yeah. straight up, and then that was kind of like all right that that was like my first step into adulthood, I guess you would say. It's like because at the time I wasn't used to having like used to having open conversations like that. Yeah. Like if yeah. it was uncomfortable, I would kind of like shy away from it. Yeah. But um, you no, know, not just from that, but you know, becoming an adult, meeting different people, business, yeah. you know, everything like that. Like you had to have uncom- uncomfortable conversations right. to like get to the focal point of anything. So. What do you think changed the most after having that first kid for you? After having the first kid, my focus. That yeah. was like, what I like. I mentioned a, a second ago. Like mm-hmm. I was just focused on like but when I first got because that right right around we had our first kid. That's when I was just diving all in into business. You know, it was a new realm for me. I wasn't really business wasn't ever anything like taught in school. Of course, it yeah. wasn't ever. My parents never did business. You know, they yeah. you know they work jobs. You know, nothing wrong with that. Right. But um, when I came into business, I was going to school for you know for a business degree. Okay. And then I started you know seeking mentorship. You know, asking people different questions, meeting, mm-hmm. and connecting with different people. Then I realized business was the route I wanted to go. I got and you. Then it was like, all right, I can't I can't learn business from people that are in school teaching me business they don't even run a business right and so that's when everything clicked for me so when i was diving into all that my main focus was just business money growing and scaling and things like that right and um whenever you know my bad it's kind of shaking oh you're good um whenever my my firstborn came into my life it kind of it settled me down and it Uh gave it like i had to i had to look at life from 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 a deep from Different lens instead yeah, of just different business perspective. Yeah, different right. perspectives. For sure, for sure. So now, after you had the first kid, how did that have? How did that affect your relationship with your with your lady? Was that kind of like a little learning curve, like having to deal with you know now she's got like these emotions and stuff, and now you guys are both trying to like take care of a kid as well as have a successful relationship. So yeah. how did that kind of affect that? Uh, as far as like. So I may not be on the stage. Just like all over, like just how did the, the, did the relationship change, you know? Because before you have kid, like yeah. it's just y'all two, you know? Y'all kind of, like you said, you know, kind of back and forth and whatever else you're doing, you know, and just kind of enjoying life, you know, even if you're not back and forth. But yeah. then once you have a kid, it becomes like more serious now. Like how did that kind of affect that? Man, so I think with a lot of relationships, um, for us, it's always, you know, we, we had, you know, bumps in the road, things like that. Yeah, of course. But we gave our, we allowed ourselves to have a foundation to our relationship. So no mm-hmm. matter what, we always know, like, we have this core value, and that's just, you know, our, our belief in God and, you know, following following his ways and everything like that. So For sure. So the, the, the foundation and that, we've, that we've been able to build, you know, I, I definitely say that having our first one is what brought us together. I got you. Nice. Because we go back to high school, so, yeah. We, oh, really? Yeah, high school we, sweethearts? Yeah, we Damn. go all the way back to high school. And so I we, mean, I guess that was, what, like four <laughs> years ago? No, I graduated in 19, and we were probably off and on. Now, oh, okay. it's not, so that's five years now. Five? Is it five years? Yeah. 20, yeah, 2024. So, yeah, yeah, but we that goes back to, like, 2018, 2017. Okay. Because, yeah, that's when I graduated. So, we okay. were off and on from, like, my sophomore year. Oh, that's cute. Junior high. Oh. And, and, and sophomore and junior year. Well, you look like a high school sweetheart ass nigga. Oh, uh, no, well, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, yeah. So we were off and on. We knew, you know, we liked each other. At the yeah. time, we didn't know, you know, if we really loved each other or not. Yeah. But we always had that attachment. And, you know, that first sure. one brought us together. And then, like I said, it allowed us to bring that foundation. And it's like, at the end of the day, we built so much together. It's like, we just continuously build on, you know, different, more things every day, every throughout the year, everything yeah. like that. So. so now you just brought another kid into the world. 
Uh, you said five months five ago, months, right? Yeah, yeah. And that one was like kind of out of nowhere. Like that was like a shock. Like <laughs> I remember seeing that and was yeah, like, yeah. they did what? Like what? <laughs> Why did y'all decide to, to take that route and like kind of keep it more on the low? Because y'all didn't post about it or anything, did you? No, nah, not really. Um, we more so. I try to keep that side. Not not for anything weird. It's just I don't like to share a lot about my family. Like everything, you know. This time my family knew about the baby. Like we yeah. it, we you know, yeah. We, we that was our plan and everything like that. But as far as like mm, sharing it and everything, yeah, I don't. We just didn't really feel like you yeah. know sharing it and all that. But I got you. but now it's like you know if people see yeah. you know people. Everybody knows we have two kids for the most yeah. part that follow yeah, us. Yeah, and, and I guess I like didn't that. like for because we used to see each other all the time back yeah, when yeah. we was both traveling and stuff, doing all the sneaker stuff. Right. But uh, since like they don't really, uh, do you still go to shows and stuff like that? Nah, not as often. Really, nah, not yeah. really. Yeah. So ever since like that kind of slowed down, it's like we yeah. ain't seen y'all in so long. Uh -huh. And then next thing you know, y'all got another kid. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? I'm like, damn, this is crazy. It is. That's yeah. what's up though. Uh, so what was one lesson that you learned from the first kid that you know that you know now to do better with the second kid? Uh, what kind? Of what I don't really I would say the first thing that came to my mind is patience. Yeah. Cause that first born is like I don't know what to do and it's just like all right the lady she I don't know what it is but they just have that that yeah, attachment to the kids like they they spirit. can figure it yeah. out. Yeah. So um it definitely helped me uh grow in my emotional intelligence to gather my thoughts and right. like all right try to figure out what's going on. Yeah. You know um with you know whether it's, there's too much going on in the house too much chaos because it gets loud with two kids and we got yeah. a dog and a dog is like a third kid as yeah, well for sure so what sometimes kind of it, it? um it's a dachshund oh okay so like a little little wiener dog uh, but yeah okay. so we i would say we basically got three kids in the house running around yeah so um what i learned from the first from my first child is definitely patience yeah and that that's played a major effect into you know outside of you know being a parent everything like that for sure that's what's up so uh, let's get into kind of where your journey with, with where you're at in life kind of starts now, which was college, right? Like you yeah. started in college and stuff, and you went there for sports, right? So what was that kind of like going there for sports, kind of being that guy in high school and getting that? Yeah. Did you get a scholarship to go play football, or how did yeah, that kind of yeah. work out? So I got a scholarship to play football, and it's crazy because um, going through high school, I didn't play football. I kind of focused in, like, right, I'm going to go and play basketball. Okay. And then I got talked into playing football my senior year of high school just for the heck of it, for really? fun. Yeah, and then I, I just went crazy that year. I don't know really? what it. Yeah, it just went crazy. It was it was super natural. Like you know, it's not really as long as you got footwork and all that, it's cool. Yeah. But besides that, um, you know, that went great. You know, senior year was a blast. So then you know, head was high. You know, yeah. big. You know, everything Both was going he good. Was that dude, yeah, huh? I, was, I felt like I was that guy. <laughs> yeah. And then so um, get the scholarship, go to go to college. And then first thing off, I noticed that, yo, this is a different game. Like, yeah. these are, I'll never, there was just like this linebacker. It was practice. We were in practice. And I went to, I was at Southern Nazarene. Okay. So it was Division Two. Okay. And um, I'll never forget. That was one thing that was like, click. There was this linebacker. He had like this full, just gold, luscious beard and long hair just flowing out the hair. Yeah. It was like 6'3", just a big just dude. Huge, yeah. Huge. And I was like, yo, this is Different. They had me at receiver, and I'm oh, shit. yeah. And I was like, yo, I, it was different. And it, you bro, know, why would they give somebody so small a scholarship? Bro, bro, this, I was I was way bigger. Like right now, I'm small. Like yeah, but I had I was sized up back then. I was like 175, pushing 180. Yeah, but you were never taller. Though. No, I was never tall. I mean, I, I might have been a little. I might have lost a couple of inches since then. Bro, you <laughs> lost no inches. No, no, no. But I was I had size to me. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I I got recruited for a cornerback. Anyways, oh, so that, okay, so okay, that, okay. That's besides the point. So when I get to college, this is where everything click yeah um where everything is a business yeah so i get to college right so i yeah. got a scholarship and then so it's weird so we go through our uh, our summer training and all that everything's right. good um at that point and then there was one day it was like right around the first week of school yeah and they bring all the student athletes into like this private portal like this private room mm -hmm. like the, all the students no parents in there there's no like it's just people helping students sign up and so I didn't know what was going on. So we pull out the computers, you know, you know, type in all of our information and things like that. And so then I overlooked like my tuition, my scholarship. You know, at first I was like, all right, school's covered. I'm cool. I'm here. I'm here just here to play football, go to school. Yeah. But then I look over the numbers. I'm like, yo, something looks different. Like, why do I have to come out of pocket for X amount? Yeah. And so I start asking a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people are asking the same questions. Like to themselves, but not asking not anybody asking else. Anybody else, yeah. And I was like, nah, like something ain't right. So I'm then I, ask. yeah, I yeah. asked. Uh, they had like a the counselors around, so I started asking the counselors like, hey, what's going on? Like, you know, I wasn't supposed to be coming out of pocket, not not this much or anything like that. And they told me like, well, you know, tuition raises throughout every year, and so 
as our tuition raises, your scholarship doesn't raise. Uh. And so then in my head, I knew that the the family that I came from, like we were we weren't poor or anything like that, but I just knew that, you know, both of my parents, they weren't together, so they didn't see eye to eye on a couple of things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um my mom, she was sick at the time, so she was, you know, getting herself together. I got so you. it was more so like, all right, if if my dad can help, cool. But at that time, I, the the amount that it was, I just knew I didn't want to put him in that situation. So in that moment, that day, I just really pulled myself out of that, you know, that school, uh, Southern Nazarene. I withdrew. I called my cousin up that stays in Oklahoma City. I was like, yo, I need you to come pick me up. So then I unpacked, I packed up everything. Um, I, I really waited till everybody went to practice so nobody would see, packed everything up, and then dipped off of campus. Damn. Yeah. And then I had to, but it was a whole, it was a long day because I had to go to all my classes, withdraw like from each individual class. And yeah. It was a long process, but I didn't even tell my parents. It was just like, I knew I needed to do it Damn. because I didn't want to put them in a situation to where yeah. you know, they got to come out of money and then I graduate school. Cause yeah. that was my first year. So imagine like three more years after that, like I'm gonna be in some major debt. So I just yeah. knew that wasn't the route for me. Yeah. And then, so I ended up going to UCO afterwards. Okay. Did you play to, sports there too or? No, that was the thing. I was going to play sports there as well. Uh -huh. I talked to the coaches um, they were telling me to come out there, you know, uh, just probably just like do a little showcase, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, get on the get on the team. But through the process of that, they needed like document, like medical documentation, which I had at Southern Nazarene and needed transfer uh, papers and everything like that. But Southern, like my school that I was at, they never sent it. Yeah. And so I didn't get to, the, the, that process didn't go through. So Damn. fast forward, I ended up having to get a, I ended up getting a job at UPS. Okay. Uh, I ran it up there pretty quick. I think I was there for like four or five months, became a supervisor. So really? it was like, yeah, I was like 18 years old telling Damn. all these older people what to do. Yeah. And at first it was kind of awkward. Yeah. But then it was like, you know, it's kind of cool. It's whatever. Oh, me, I, I, was, cool. I never really made money like that before. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but right, <laughs> right. I never really had any income. So uh, that that's what led me to that job. And then... Um, then I immediately, like I said, it, it was cool, but I realized like it was damn, it's the same thing every day. Like get up, go to this warehouse. I can't really take my phone in there. It's just seeing trucks every day. It's like yo, this is not it. Not it, yeah. And so then I ended up, I ended up getting into business. Started watching a whole lot of YouTube videos, things yeah. like that in the dorm. And uh, one of the things I picked up on was reselling shoes. Yeah. And so that was back in like pre-COVID, right before COVID. It was like, what was that, 2019 COVID was? 20, like the end of 2019. End of 2019, 2020, yeah. So that's yeah. what I got into reselling shoes. And then my first pair was like the, the pine green ones. Okay. And good then, pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a good pair. Yeah. And then, but the thing is like, this was before you, you could, they had like the raffles and like, you can only get one pair or anything like yeah. that. So I'll never forget, it was at Quill, you know, Quill Springs Mall. Mm -hmm. So I went there, it was like Chance Sports. I don't know who this person was, but I don't know what I said or did for them to open up the gate, but it was before they even opened. They just let yeah. me, they opened up the gate, closed the gate, let me in. I grabbed like six pairs that day. I don't know why. I don't know how, why, why they let me do that, but I went in there, grabbed six pairs. Let's and that, go. And that's how it started. And then, uh, they, they don't never, they've never fucked with me like that, bro. <laughs> I've was, never really tried either, yeah. but like, I mean, they see me there all the time, you know, and like yeah. I try to be cool, you know what I'm saying? But like, no one's ever just came up to me and been like, hey, bro. I can get you like five pairs of these if you want, bro. Bro, I didn't have to pay them. That's the thing. You know, a lot of times people yeah, are like, I can like do something for you, but you got to give me yeah. like, they didn't even ask for anything. I, I don't remember who it was to this day. I still don't. Damn, I definitely would have been like, hey, let me get that number, <laughs> bro. <laughs> I was more so caught up in like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. So I yeah. wasn't even thinking about like, yo, let's connect. Let me get your numbers so I can Type keep shit. all that. Yeah. But it was just more so like, yo, I'm ready to sell it. I'm ready to sell it. Yeah. And uh, that's what really started like the business venture for me. And then sure. um, that, you know, that lasted, I would say for about three three years or so three well yeah 2023 2024 now um and then throughout that process that's you know that's what brought me into credit and everything yeah. so so with your uh going back to the sports and stuff like did you ever feel like this was something that you were gonna like take to like a serious level like was there ever a time where you were like damn bro i could go to the league bro Coming where I came from, from the small town, that's all I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the, the yeah. way that it, because everything came at ease, really. Yeah. Um, with the specific to football, the way it was just one year is like one and done. So yeah. <laughs> uh, at, that was my mindset. But then, like I said, once I got to college football and realized, like, okay, all these other players, they were also the best in their town as well. Exactly. And so yeah. the best of the best, they're, all right, they're the group of people that are, you know, best out of their towns. Somebody's got to be the better one. Yeah. And I realized, like, yo, the, there's some athletes out here. Yeah. And that, that's when it kind of clicked, like, all right, this this ain't this might not be the route. That what I'm was that take. realization like for you? Like, was it, it kind of hard to accept that for bro, you? It was, it was hard. That's that, yeah. like, 
at that time, what am I, 18 years old, freshman year of, yeah. freshman year of college? Yeah. At the 18 years of, like, just, especially, like, you know, your parents feeding into you. Nothing bad, like, yeah. not brainwashing me or anything like that, but they're feeding into you, like, supporting yeah. you and yeah, all that. Yeah. It's like, okay, this this there's no other way. I didn't think about, you know, any jobs that I was going to take, you know, yeah. career or anything like that. Like I said, I didn't know anything about business or entrepreneurship. So all I knew was sports, like, and once I realized, like, that wasn't it, oh, yeah, it, was, it was definitely yeah. hard to accept it. See, I accepted that when I was, like, 14, 15 years old. I wish I did. I knew that there was, because <laughs> I, I eventually I just got to the point where, like, I just didn't even care about sports anymore. Were you good at one point, though? Yeah, I was always good at sports. Like, What'd you I play? played, I played it all. Football, basketball, you, I ran you track, like you were a good soccer. football player, yeah. Honestly, football was probably one of my worst sports. For real? Were you not coordinated or something? I was very coordinated. I don't know, honestly. Like, yeah. honestly, I was always too big. Very, barely too big because like in like recreational league like football when you're a kid if you're like they have like a weight limit <clears throat> yeah so if you're like over like 85 pounds or something like that in like the fourth grade I don't know what the weight limits are but yeah say it's like 85 pounds if you're like 86 87 they slap a fucking sticker on the back of your helmet and you can't run the ball what yeah I've so never like, heard of that before yeah yeah you have to play a line here position in Tulsa or? no this was in Kansas That's okay yeah I mean, I've heard you yeah. talk about Kansas yeah. before yeah yeah so uh yeah like you couldn't run the ball so That's crazy. I never could run the ball because I would always always it'd be like three or four pounds over the limit were you were you wanting to run the ball so bad bro <laughs> so bad I wanted to run the ball and I would always get stuck on the line you should have just so. cut some weight man I should have, but I was, like, in fourth grade, bro. I didn't know about cutting weight. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm, I'm just, just like, saying, oh, I'm just fuck, saying. I'm too fat. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I was just, I've always just been a husky kid, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. just always kind of been my, my build up. So, uh, yeah, I never could run the ball. And then I finally, like, got a chance to, like, do that whenever I got into, like, high school. Yeah, yeah. And I played at this one high school. And I've told this story a couple times on here before, too. And uh-huh. I fucking, they gave me the ball. Like, they would never let me play. And then one game, they finally stuck me in, and it was like a varsity game. They put me in the game because we were killing the team. Yeah. And they gave me the ball, and I scored like – or they gave me the ball. I got like a four-yard run, and then they were yeah. like, all right, we're going to run that play again. You're getting the ball again, JL. And I'm like, all right, bet. Gave it to me again. I got like a 62-yard touchdown. Tough. They took me out and never let me play again, bro. You serious? Never let me play. Did they ever bro. talk about it like after the game or anything like that? No. Did y'all, y'all didn't have any film or nothing? I don't know. They never gave me any film to me. No, I'm talking about like I'm y'all sure. never, like y'all never, like after the games watched film or talked about that player or nothing like that. Oh no, that's crazy. Definitely not. So it's like it never happened. Basically, Max Prep still you, got were me. You hurt? There, was that no. was that hurt to like? Oh yes, bro. Hell yes, bro. Like that shit hella hurt. I ended up quitting. Like that was my last year playing football because yeah. I was just like, bro. They pretty much. It felt. I went to an all white school. I was literally the only black kid. In they the had school. like favoritism there. A lot of favoritism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the crazy thing is, is, bro, like, they would beg me to play this sport, bro. Like, Because right. I, I always liked basketball. I was more of a basketball dude. I wasn't even going to play football. I didn't really care to. Because yeah. I, when I got to the school, it was already too late. Like, I got there whenever school was starting. So it was like, right. I missed summer. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have none of that, like, for practice, you know, and get to know the plays and all that. So uh, they would, like, literally pull me out of class. And, like, the principal or the coach would come over there and, like, talk to me about playing football and, like, all this other shit. So I ended up giving in, and I played, and it just felt like they just wanted a, a black dude on their team. That's you know? it? They just wanted to, like, maybe kind of intimidate Was there anybody else people. besides you that were, like, black on the team? Or there was nobody you? in the school that was black. You're lying. I was literally the only black kid in the entire school. There was one other girl. She oh, was biracial. Man. Yeah? And that was it. That was it? That so was how did it. it feel going to a school like that? That shit sucked, bro. I hated it. Well, actually, I'm not going to sit here and cap and just say I hated it. Yeah. I didn't mind it, honestly. Like, I made a lot of good friends there, you know what I'm saying? I became, like, that was kind of my first year, kind of, like, becoming cool. I hung out with, like, a lot of the cooler kids. Yeah. But I will say there was definitely, like, a lot of subliminal, low-key racism, you know what I mean? I like, I that you. you would kind of have to face. There yeah. was, like, a, a one kid that would, like, always do, like, little funky-ass shit to me and shit. Like, I remember one time I left my deodorant in, like, the little locker room. Yeah. And, like, he filled the entire cap with, like, lotion and shit. What? So you're just like, Shh. yeah, bro. Like I just opened my deodorant to go put it on, and then it was just like fucking lotion, like what? all in there, bro. So and just the childish stuff that you had just to deal childish with. Yeah. shit like that. We ended up fighting, and I whooped his ass too. That shit oh, okay, was funny. Okay. That's now, what that I got it. talked about. <laughs> that got talked about for a long time. <laughs> oh, but not the not the highlight play that. You oh did. no, no, I didn't talk about that. They of course, they're gonna whoop that dude's ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, man, it was it was definitely like some weird shit. But one thing that I respected the most about that school was the principal. Like, the principal made it a point 
to make me like aware like if anybody is being like that towards you yeah. you come to me because he's like he, he's been at that school his entire life he's lived in that town his entire life so it was one of those things where it was like I'm going to like, I will like support you. You know what I'm saying? Like if you oh, come to me and do, says yeah. that someone does something to you, then I will take care of you because I know how it is. Like I know how this school can be. I know how these kids can be and I can't be there all the time. But like, if you come to me and tell me, then we will take care of it. And like, well, that's all good. Dude. Yeah. It was lit, bro. Cause like he would literally pull me out of class and just, we would just go off and go sit outside and just sit there and talk for like yeah. 15 minutes about how everything was going and if everybody was being good to me and everything. So I really respected that. Shout That's out Mr. Good. Haddix. I'm sure he probably <laughs> would never see this, but shout out hey, to you him. Hey, you never know. You never, never know. know. For real. Yeah. This who's going to blow up. It's going to be on everybody's algorithm. That's facts, know. bro. That's, that that the, facts. that's the plan. That is the plan, bro. That shit's going to happen too, bro. Yeah. I can't wait, bro, because there's a lot of people that I feel like have shitted on me, you know, like not necessarily that's what, that's shitted. anything though. Yeah. yeah, that is true. Yeah. That is true. And then like, I remember like, uh, there's this certain celebrity that I was kind of reaching out to that yeah. I don't really know personally, but like, I know him from like, I kind of know him, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I know like people in his circle and stuff like that. And I was trying to reach out to him to see if he wanted to get on and like, he wouldn't respond to me. But then like, cause I reached out like a couple of days in a row. Yeah. And then I also had one of the people that I, that I knew, knew him reach out to him. Uh -huh. And then, like, he ended up posting uh, on, like, Facebook and was like, you got to pay for an interview for me. But just, like, no tagging nobody anything? Like, no, he, just, he didn't. He just posted it? Yeah, he just posted it. So you kind of knew it was like. I'm like, okay. I mean, how many people are really asking the interview rate right at this moment? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Maybe a lot, you know, because he's, he's big, but he ain't huge. You know what I mean? But And then he was like, and it was like a couple thousand dollars. He was like, you got to pay, like, 3000 to interview me or something uh -huh. like that. And I'm like. Well, I'm fucking definitely not doing <laughs> that, buddy. So, yeah. No. Yeah. I'd much rather, like, I would much rather have an interview with you mm -hmm. and pay $3,000 on promotion right. than to pay someone for $3,000 for an episode. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that $3,000, bro, you could come here, you could sit down and not repost a single thing. Not facts. You know what I mean? And a lot of people out here, I feel like, have either relatable stories that they could talk about. Like, something yeah. that I could say today, shoot, might, you know, some, might attach to somebody else facts. that's out there watching. Or facts. might be something that somebody needs to hear. Yeah. So there's tons of people out here with, you know, enough information to where yeah. you don't have to go to a celebrity or anything like that. That's my ultimate goal, bro. Like, yeah. I would like, I mean, I do want to talk to, like, celebrities and stuff. Like, right, people right, that have right, done right. amazing things, you know what I mean? Because, like, I want to know, like, what was it like being in that moment? You know what I mean? Yeah, and making yeah. that, you know? But... I also want to, like, talk to, like, the people that don't even have any social media accounts, you know what I mean? Old war vets and yeah, shit yeah. like that that, like, have actual stories and something that, like, people can learn from and be like, damn, like, that yeah. dude has lived an incredible life. Everybody you know has a story, I mean? yeah. Everybody has a story for sure. So that's kind of where my goal is to get where I can, like, I can not only – have a platform, but I can put people on too, you know, people right. that don't even want to be put on. They just want to share their story, you know, yeah. with me and that'd be lit. That's, That's what's up, dude. That's what's up. Me. I mean, so anyway, back to, back to this. So the sneakers and stuff, like how did, what did, where came about like with the sneakers? How did that come about? How did you come across that on YouTube? You said you started watching stuff on YouTube. Like, yeah. did it just pop up on your feed or what kind of plugged that into you for you? Man. So in high school, I, I made a little bit of money here and there, not, I was all, there was like, we had Facebook communities okay. and I, I had, I had started one out there in Lawton where I'm from uh -huh. and it was like a buy, sell and trade type community. Right. And so me, I was always somehow hustling. Like I would have one pair of shoes, but I would somehow trade it and get three shoes back in return and just keep trading and trading. So yeah. my sneaker game in high school was, it was up there. Yeah. Okay. And then, but also on top of that, where I made money with shoes, I was cleaning a lot of people's shoes. So I would go right. to school grab people's shoes, put them in my backpack, take them home, clean them, and then bring them back. Yeah. You know, make $20, $25 here and there. Right. And so I always had, like, some cling to shoes. Mm -hmm. And it was more so like, all right, I, I have all these shoes. Even in my dorm, like, I had a lot of shoes in my closet. Mm -hmm. I was like, shoot, um, I, I don't exactly, I don't know if I searched something up or if I was already, like, my search engine was already on shoes. Yeah. And so you I know that, they be listening, so. You said what? You know they be listening, Oh, they be, so bro, you, you type in one thing, your whole algorithm changes. Bro, you say one thing, and your whole algorithm <laughs> changes, yeah, bro. Yeah, forget about typing it in. <laughs> right, you just bro. say it. You just say it. Sure, watch. I, I, like, when I go on my YouTube, a whole bunch of podcasts that was about to pop up on YouTube. Probably. And so, but yeah, taking it back to, to college. So, yeah, that's what it, I don't remember if I searched something up or what. But um, that's what led to it is just coming across it on YouTube. And I was, it was just kind of like, shoot, I'll try it. I had money set to the side. I didn't have any bills. I was in college. So yeah. uh, I was like, shoot, I'll try it. And yeah. it, I started doing it from there. Yeah, for sure. Who were those, some of those first YouTubers that you were watching and stuff? Bro, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, 
in the sneaker game, I never really had like a YouTuber that I just really watched. It was mm. more so like I just understood the business of making money, like flipping, like buying low, selling high, yeah. re, you know, reinvesting money. Um, you know, not saying I didn't watch YouTubers, but I yeah. can't really say that there was one YouTuber that just really like I followed or that caught my eye or anything like that. But yeah. I, I would say like if there was one. Let me, I'm, I'm lying. If there was one, I would say, you know, uh, Rare Kicks. He has like the he's out in California. Mm-mm. Well, his, his name is Rare Kicks. So I, he was one person I do remember. Like I, I watched a lot of his videos. But mm. outside of that, like there wasn't really like one person I just like followed and got the blueprint from or something like that. Bro, the first person I ever remember seeing doing like sneaker youtube it wasn't even sneaker youtube it was actually like he had a real ass tv show uh-huh. about sneakers it was a called TV show? yeah it was uh sneaker pond i think it was sneaker pond sneaker pond where they, where's he located in new york it was this guy named no uh idea. chase reed and it was his dad no and idea. they used to have a show it would be like you, you have you ever seen that ball, uh, the ball show the ball family Mm-mm. Oh, to, oh, like Lonzo and them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember that show that they used to have? Did you ever watch it? it yeah, I, I never on, like, watched Facebook, it like consistently, it but yeah, yeah I, I yeah. watched it in there, yeah. So they had a show just like that where it was like a Facebook show. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they would like, basically it was like a bunch of just him like sourcing sneakers for celebrities and yeah. stuff like that. I remember like one time he like found a shoe for like Lil Durk and like they played a game of one-on-one for it and like Lil yeah, Durk yeah. beat him so he had to give him the shoes for free. Yeah. And it was just like a bunch of like little shit like that and like. That was like the first person I ever really see, and now he's like, I never see his shit no more, bro. He's like, like, it's like he doesn't do shoes at all. He does. I don't else. even think he does shoes anymore, bro. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of people don't do shoes anymore. I uh, mean, yeah, well, that is true. Yeah, yeah. I don't do I don't, shoes no more. Really, <laughs> kind of. I don't know. I don't want to say it fell off. It's more so like, I, I can't because any business is oversaturated. Yeah. So I don't want to sit here and say that sneakers got oversaturated. I just think it kind of got, for me, myself, it kind of got played out. And so I put yeah. my more so focus into, like, what I do now, credit and then yeah. car rentals. So. Yeah. So I agree with that, too. Like, it, like you said, like, it's not necessarily, and I don't think it was the people that was oversaturating it. You know, I think it's more or less just, like, the amount of things that Nike and every Jordan week. have put out. Like, every, week. every <laughs> single week, they've got new stuff coming yeah. out. There's three dunks that come out every week that's a different colorway. Yeah. Just, it makes it not exclusive anymore. And, like, whenever things aren't in demand and not exclusive, it's just, like, drives the price down, which is good, you know, for, yeah. like, the, the average consumer that just want to, you know, buy the pairs and stuff. But, like, right. if you were somebody that wanted to make a little extra money, then it's, like, it makes it hard, you know, because right. at one point it was, like, the everyday regular regular bricks you can make thirty dollars on you know twenty right. thirty and bucks, get multiple you know? pairs of and it. get multiple yeah. pairs and just kind of run up those thirty bucks and then like yeah. the good shoes that would come out you could expect to make a hundred dollars or one hundred fifty bucks you know but now it's like the good shoes you're making thirty dollars on forty bucks <laughs> and then the bricks you're fucking losing forty dollars on right them, you know what I mean like and what did what didn't make sense to me and the reason why I kind of slowed down on it it was like. It was too. It was too little of a profit margin to invest so much into it. Yeah, if, if that makes sense. So yeah. it's like you invest like two hundred dollars, you know, for like a Jordan or a retro. You're at least gonna pay a two hundred some dollars. Yeah. but you're only gonna make like thirty to forty dollars at yeah. most. And to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, you can get you know multiple pairs, but though all those don't sell at one time. Exactly. So it's like instead of yeah. being in a hole for so long, it's like. I'd rather put my focus put my money something. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of where I am too, you know. And I, I used we used to get so much shit for that, bro. Like for being a reseller, bro. It, it never Every, made everything's sense. Everything's resold, man. Everything is resold, bro. <laughs> I'm like, dang, bro. I'm just trying to have a little extra money, dog. Yeah. Like, why are you mad at me, bro? Like, right. I'm not even out here just like botting and stuff. And even if I was botting, <laughs> bro, learn how to bot. Yeah, yeah, like if you want to fucking if you're mad at me because I'm getting all the shoes because I'm botting them, learn how to bot, and then you can get all the shoes because you're botting them, right? People don't like down to like the cars that you get. People buy those, put on the lot, sell it back to you. People every like, small purchase is like Amazon. Yeah. Like I don't know if you got these on Amazon or yep. anything like that. Yep. Somebody you probably bought it from somebody, somebody who else yeah, got it was, in a store mm-hmm. and then now they're reselling it back to you on Amazon. And so like everything, no matter what it is, no matter what product it is, like you're you're paying resale price. You're paying for it. resale. Yeah. yeah. That's still a tough thing for people to learn too, because I work in a sneaker store now, and like uh-huh. people always come in there and they just like. Why is this shoe three hundred dollars in here, but it's a hundred and fifteen on Nike? <laughs> and I'm like, well, go buy it then on Nike. I'm like, exactly. and let me know if you can or not. Exactly, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, most yeah. of the time, like they're not there. She's, they're like, no, I just seen them on there this morning. Yeah, and then you're like, yeah, they probably have like very limited sizing or something like that, and they're mm-hmm. like, 
yeah, they didn't have my size on there, but I did see them on there. And but I'm what like, people exactly. Don't, what people don't realize is that they're the ones driving the value of the shoe up. Like, yeah. Either they post something about it and like, all right, just because they see a celebrity or something with, oh, I want that shoe now. Mm-hmm. So guess what? Everybody else wants the shoe. Everybody else wants it. And there's it. only so many, there's only so much supply of it. Yeah. And so as the demand goes up, guess what? The supply, you know, the price is going to go up. So now you got to pay that top tier price. What was your, uh, what was your favorite thing about, about sneakers? About sneakers? Like the the journey of it, or or yeah. like just sneakers as a whole. The the journey of it, like selling them and stuff. Like I would say, this is, it's not even sneaker related. Mm-hmm. But what what I got out of uh, reselling, my favorite part was the Playstations. Mm. I would say like I was I was like the, I would say the number one plug for Playstations. Really? Yeah. You just flipping them? I, w- I was flipping them crazy. Like, like I was crazy. I was buying like eight to ten PS fives a day. Damn. Um, I ended up sourcing. You know, not just me, but I ended up sourcing them to like Lil Pump. Oh uh, yeah, do yeah, you remember Mia, you were like, selling them to yeah, celebrities and stuff? Uh, Mia Pump, Mia, uh, a little Pump, Mia Khalifa. Uh, what was that? Yeah, you sold a PS Five to Mia Khalifa. Yeah, yeah, yeah so <laughs> that and, is uh, crazy. What's the, the that's a real? A, it's like three people. But there's like TikTok famous. They live in one house or something like that. Okay, I don't know what their name is. It's like mm, one house, so or something, many of full them, house. Yeah. I don't know, but it was a couple of celebrities that I ended up selling them to. And then that was just, you know, building connections. Like, I sold so many of them, came across the right person that's connected with the people. So then, shoot, I just started selling them off. I, I ran it up. So, like, how period. how was that? Like, how did that go about? Like, did somebody, like, from Mia Khalifa's, like, or any of these people, did somebody from their camp hit you up? Or did they personally hit you up? Or, like, how yeah. did it go about selling those to, to them? So, of course, you know, these people, they're busy. So they, they yeah. really don't have time to, like, just sit there and text, like, hey, yo, uh, Zay, or, you know, at the time, Z Public, I need yeah. these. Z so, private, yeah, they got, yeah. so what they do is, like, they have people that run their social media pages and things like that. Yeah. And so a lot, I don't know, I don't know if it was just an era of what celebrities were doing, but a lot of them were doing giveaways. Okay, yeah. And so, you know, they would have to pay it for someone. And so, yeah. you know, I, like I said, I was running it up a lot. I would post some every day, and I just got connected with the right people each time, and Sold, sourced them to them, which yeah. then it, it was for uh, like. The so how did you know they were going to those people? Because so they would tell me like it, they was like, "Hey, X Y Z or you know X Y Z celebrity needs it," oh, yeah. and then I would send it out there, and then uh, immediately like that next week or something like that, it'll be up on their on their feed. They'd post it and everything uh-huh. like that. So lit. Yeah, it was cool. It was plug. cool. All right, that's lit. Uh, what was the thing that you hated the most about reselling? Oh, uh, what I hated the most. I don't want to say, all right, so it's it's not what I hated the most, but it's what I got tired of doing. Yeah. It was more so like the footwork of it. Yeah. The footwork, I love I love hustling, but then I got tired of hustling, especially with having two kids and a family. Yeah. Like, I can that only shit gets it, exhausting. It gets it gas money, mm-hmm. traveling. Shoot, mm-hmm. you traveled a lot. Yeah. So like, that was my favorite thing about it, it's it, It's cool, yeah. but it's like it's tired at the same time, yeah. too, because then you got to go back home, get back in your routine, get everything yeah. going. Yeah. Um, the footwork of it is definitely like that. I don't want to say that's what I hated the most, but that's what kind of like got tiring. It's like, man, yeah. it's like. You're going out here, and you're not even guaranteed to get anything. Like you're just yeah. hoping to find something. Yeah. Shoot, there's times where you don't, uh, you don't come across anything to to make in return for you know the either the time that you spent, yeah. uh, the money that you spent on gas or the food or anything like yeah. that. And so I would I would more so say that's why I, I disliked that. There wasn't anything that I hated because I I enjoyed you know business. Flipping money, meeting new people, and that's what I got out of all of it. But yeah. it was more so just uh, just the hustle of it that got tiring. What was your best flip? My best flip. Well, like I said, the time period of the PlayStations. Yeah. But if we're if we're talking about shoes specifically, I would say some these Travis Scott ones. Okay. Uh, I don't even keep up. When I was even even resale, I never kept up with the names. I just yeah. I just knew it was a shoe, and I just checked the value of it. But it, I think it was the was it the fragments that are the blue blue, the blue. yeah yeah, yeah. There was the high low, top or the lows? It was a low top. Okay. I had to come up on that one, man. Really? I don't know if I should feel bad for it or what. Nah. <laughs> so, what is, did you hit retail or something or what? Nah, okay. it was a trade value. Oh. So I had I think it was like. Bro, it was like two pairs of dunks and like maybe a hundred dollars or something like that. So I ended, I ended up coming in. I was in probably like three fifty on the fragments. Yeah, and it ended up turning around selling it for like sixteen. That is crazy. Yeah. So I, I that one I made like thirteen, twelve it was like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollar profit off of that. What so, kind of dunks were they? Do you remember the dunks that they were that you traded? Mm, bro, I, I I don't remember. It was it was something that wasn't even like what the hell. Who it definitely was, wasn't like no off whites and yeah. like, if I that I would have remembered it. But it was yeah. definitely something where it's like. But I don't feel it was more so like he just because he hit the shoe on retail. Okay. So it was kind of like he just wanted some something, something that, that he, he could wear. And he wasn't nobody that like looked at the shoe for price or anything like because he knew the value of the shoe. But he was just kind of like, yo, I just I just want something I could wear. I don't really like these or anything like that. So. 
he but, got what he wanted. I got what I yeah. wanted. So it was a win-win. Yeah, you should definitely feel bad for that. Oh, though. come on, Because you definitely robbed that man. <laughs> <laughs> you robbed the fuck out of him. Man, it's all good. It's like, hey, like I said, we, it was a win-win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as everybody's happy, then, you know, hey, yeah, whatever, yeah. you know. But, yeah, you definitely robbed the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> what was your... um? What was your worst flip? Like, or what did you like lose the most money on? What did I lose the most money on? My all right. So my method of resale. So at first it was direct to consumer. Like I'll buy one pair, you know, sell one pair. But then mm -hmm. I got into like, all right, I'm buying in bulk because I just got connected with all this retail stores. Honestly, so right. then I just started buying bulk all the time. I don't know mm -hmm. if you ever remember. Like all my when mm -hmm. I was at the events, it was always like either one of the same shoe or like a bunch most, of the same. Yeah, stuff. bunch yeah, of yeah. the same stuff. So, I uh, what shoe was it? I bought multiple pairs of and it was a flop yeah i can't remember i'm not i'm not gonna lie i can't remember right now mine was the uh maybe the, you'll come back go ahead the though. cojp jordan ones COJP. they're like they're like midnight navy they're like those is that uh, the one that's got like the nike the the velcro no this one is just like it's like the japan ones like they have like a silver pair then they have like the navy pair Navy, like the suede? Yeah. I thought those did good. Did they, they not? No, they did. They started off doing all right, and, like, yeah. they were up there. And then I think I brought, like, I brought, like, six or seven pairs of them. Um, and, you like. You must not have sold them at the right time, because they, no, they were I hitting didn't. when they first exactly. came out. Exactly. That's the problem. That's the problem. Like, when I bought them, was right as they were getting ready to go down. Oh, so I brought okay. them at so the high. Of investment. And then, yeah, okay, and then, okay. like, fucking two weeks later, their shoes had, like, they were down, like, 50 bucks. That's and tough. I had like six six pairs, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I lost a couple hundred dollars on those. Yeah, I can't remember. I'm still trying to remember, but I can't remember what exactly shoe I bought in bulk and yeah. it wasn't worth it. Yeah. I don't know if he'll come back or not. <laughs> it's all good. So uh, now let's move on to uh, what what you're doing now, which is which is the credit and stuff like that. So what kind of got you into like working on credit and stuff and, and realizing the importance of credit? Man, what got so what got me into the importance of credit was shoes. Like I, yeah. I kind of got to the point where it's like, all right, I I'm making consistent, I'm making a consistent amount, which is you know a decent amount at that time. Yeah. But I knew I wanted to scale it, but I didn't yeah. know how because you know at the time it was just set. I was just reinvesting the money that I had coming in. Right. But then I ended up coming across credit, and then understanding that okay, a lot of people leverage credit to invest into the business, not just reselling, but any business. Yeah. Um. And so I came across that, and yeah, immediately my first thing was, oh, I'm about to go apply for credit cards. Yeah. And so I go apply for credit cards denied. Yeah. And so I'm like, yo, I don't understand why I'm getting denied. Yeah. And then so then I start watching more videos, reading more books, things like that. And uh, I come across that like, I have a couple, I think I had like two negative items on my credit report. Mm -hmm. And uh, which was, I, I didn't return like a Cox Wi-Fi box or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so that was a collection on my credit report, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, if people don't know, it's just something that if you don't pay, you know, a company back, they then sell, sell, sell that account to a collection agency right. that, that tries to collect the, the debt from you. Right. And so that was one collection. And I think another one was like a, a gym membership that I just stopped going to. And I just, mm. I didn't think of it, it was any big deal. Like at the time I wasn't thinking of credit. Yeah. And so I wasn't like, oh, this is going to pop up on my credit report and yeah. anything like that. So then whenever I, like I said, I got into credit, uh, started to try to apply for things, kept getting denied. So then I had to learn about, all right, well, shoot, since I have this on here, how can I get it off of here so I can get approved? Yeah. And so then l having to learn credit repair and get removed negative items and things like that, it's a totally different realm of just understanding credit itself. Yeah. And so then I had to dive into that. Um, on top of what I already dove into, the basics and understanding how people leverage it. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to, you know, uh, remove negative items, how to go about that. And that was a whole process for myself. So I learned that, got results, you know, removed the negative items, and then, you know, went out, got what I needed, started dumping money and started utilizing uh, the credit cards that I got into my business, scaling it. And then by default, honestly, like, uh, I really just, I, I like to track track the journey and everything that I do. Yeah. Because uh, where I'm from, a lot of people, business isn't a normal thing. A lot right. of them look at me like, yo, he's doing something different. So yeah. I always track my journey. Um, and so I post about, you know, removing those items and mm -hmm. a couple people just hit me up like, yo, how do you do that? You know, and it just from one person, you know, led to the next and then it just kept leading on to the next. And then I realized, like, well, dang, maybe this is something that, shoot, more people need. Yeah. And um, as I dove into it, you know, I wasn't even charging people at first or anything like that. And I just started helping people out, giving them. I think we were on a call at one yeah, point. Yeah. I just gave you some pointers. I think you may mention on the live, like, yeah. after the call, you did something and your score yeah. went up. Yeah. And I'm so at, that, like, a 700 now. Yeah, this shit, that's what's up, dude. Yeah. And so, yeah, just doing more of that. And then I realized, like, all right, this is more so, like, a, it's, a, it's a needed business, like, People don't realize they need credit until they need credit. Yeah. Whether they, whether Facts. it's that they're at the dealership, like dang, I can't get approved. They people need a car. Yeah. People want to buy a home, and yep. so a lot of times they feel like they once they want to buy a home, they can't because yep. they got bad credit. 
you know, that's something they don't realize until then. And then a lot of people, they, they want to start businesses and everything like that. But what, what keeps most people from starting a business is the lack of capital. Yeah. And so, you know, people, you know, they, they have their jobs and that's taken care of, you know, their home, their family, you know, mm -hmm. their basic needs and everything like that. But there's really no excess cash to invest into a business to scale it and everything like that. Right. And so once I realized like credit isn't just something that I need, it's something that a lot of people need, mm -hmm. that that's what, you know, drove my focus into it even more so that I can then provide a service into others. Right. How accurate is credit karma? Like, so, so that's a, that's a major topic. So credit karma, I, I, I'm not one to say it's not, it's not accurate. So, because it gives you what is, so there's two different credit scores. Yeah. So you have what is called the Vantage score uh -huh. and that's what credit karma gives you. Okay. And then you have your FICO score. Okay. So the FICO score is what most lenders are going to pull. Right. Which is like, if you go to a dealership or whenever, like for your, uh, or you're applying for anything, dealership, uh -huh. Uh, mortgages, credit cards, most of the time they're going to pull your FICO score. Uh -huh. So that's why it may seem a little different whenever you apply for things like, and they tell you, well, actually this is your credit score. And that's yeah. why it may, uh, some people feel like, well, credit, credit karma says this. It's not, but it's accurate as far as your Vantage score. How and much of a difference can you usually like expect in credit karma between your Vantage and your FICO? There's really no exact amount. Like somebody may have like a 720 on credit karma and then have like, shoot, a 740 FICO score. They may uh. have like a 730 credit karma score and they may actually have like a 680 fico score it just varies like you'll never really know until you actually pull your actual fico score got you because i have like a seven something on credit karma so i don't know yeah and so, so whenever it comes to credit this is what i tell people all the time so it's like it's not necessarily a lot of people especially when you whenever i first got into it the mm -hmm. the number is what gets thrown around the most like all right what's your credit score all right my credit score is this my credit score is that but the most important part to credit is what's on your credit report your like credit, how many like credit history yeah your credit history because yeah. at the end of the day you somebody could have a 750 but have one account that's have one credit card that's a 200 dollar limit so yeah. it's like if you have one account 200 dollar limit and you have a 750 and then somebody else has a 680 with 10 accounts you know positive history who are you, who are you going to trust more if you were to lend money somebody right. with a lower score but more history or somebody yeah. with a higher score but one account yeah so it, it's not necessarily about the the credit score because the credit report and the history is what make up what is what makes up the score. So I think one of the things that that like you were saying like people don't know about that they need credit until they go for something. The thing for me was a phone. Like I remember I broke my phone. Yeah. And I was like, shit, I need to go get a new phone. I need to go get a new phone. And I had like already been on iPhone, so I'm like, I gotta get an iPhone, and of yeah, course yeah. I gotta get a better iPhone than the one I just had. You know, can't so, get the same one. Yeah, can't get the same one. So I go and I try to get a, a phone, and then they're like. Oh yeah, it'll be like a thousand dollar deposit or some crazy shit at AT and T. So I'm like, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> so then I go somewhere else, and they're like, oh yeah, it'll be like twelve hundred dollars, and like it just keeps going up. And then I finally get to Verizon, and they're like, yeah, they're like, have you been trying to get phones all day? And I was like, yeah. Mm. And then I was like, how do you know that? And then they're like, <laughs> because we see like that you had like three basically inquiries like yeah, from yeah, like yeah. all these different places. She was like, you should have came to us first. She was like, it's gonna be like fifteen hundred dollars. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> y'all can suck a dick, bro. <laughs> like, and I got up out of there, bro. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. bro, I need to fucking get my credit right. But was that before was, or after we talked? That was at, way before. Way before. Okay. It was still like another year or two that like because eventually I just like. I gave up. I tried to go get a car as well at one point. Yeah. And like I wanted, there was like one that they had on the lot that was like an older car, 2016 or 15 or some shit like that. Yeah. And it was only like $11,000. And I was like, okay, that's something that like I would be, you know what I'm we saying? Comfortable. Yeah, yeah, you talking. know? Yeah. So I like, I filled out my little shit for that or whatever. They denied me for that car. But approved me for like a brand new 2022. They wanted you to pay that interest. Toyota Rav Four, yeah. like some sh shit that I did not need, bro. I'm like, <laughs> but, I don't fucking wait, need. Did they outlet. come out there like, hey, you got to deny this one, but it was, was on, it was online. Oh, it was online. It, yeah, okay, it was, okay, I did okay. it online. So like, they sent me an email, and that's what they basically said was like, yeah, no, that cheap car, nah, nah, <laughs> you don't, we don't trust you with that. This yeah. brand new car with all this other shit that you don't need that you, you didn't ask this. for, this is what we can give you. And I'm yeah. like, so after that, I just gave up. Right. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I don't want to care. I don't care about it. I'm not going to use it. But uh, now I finally like, I'm getting back to the point where I'm like, okay, I actually fucking need it. So yeah, right now I'm like one of those people that like, I got a nice credit score with a low amount of credit. It history. feels good to have a good credit. It score, does huh? have feel good to at least have the score though. And yeah, then, so yeah. now like I'm about to start getting more lines of credit open, you know, just like little stuff and, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, definitely focus on getting the lines of credit open, like personal. 
um, like what I tell people, like you want to make sure that you, especially you, you know, in a business and everything, make sure that like, there's nothing negative on there. If there yeah. is something negative on there, you got to get that removed. Yeah. And then once you get that removed, like, all right, we got to start adding positive accounts to the credit report on the yeah. personal side. Yeah. And then once you get that taken care of, then you can get in the business side of credit and then start getting business, right. credit cards, things like that, invest into, you know, a business, get the, well, you already got everything you need, but, you know, investing as far as traveling, things yeah. like that. Yeah. There's a lot more expenses that go into it. For so. sure. So I uh, once read, I got to look at this so I can, so I can get it right. Black Youngster, he once said in a diss track to Young Dolph, he said, uh, yeah, nigga, I got my own shit. Hold on. Yeah, nigga, I can't read that well. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he said, yeah, nigga, I got my own shit, nigga. I own my own cars, nigga. I own my house, nigga. Nigga, my shit ain't leased, nigga. All yeah. your shit leased, bitch. And you paying notes on that shit, nigga. Good credit, have an ass, bitch. What is <laughs> This is in a song? <laughs> this is in a this song. Is a song? <laughs> yeah. What is your response to that, bro? <laughs> Good Man. credit having ass bitch. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Like, I don't want to be the person, like the, the cliche person, like, bro. He's he's financially illiterate. <laughs> but that that would be my response because it's like, all right, if you put so, because there are people out there like that, like, yeah. you know, I don't want to pay cash for everything. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like everybody uses credit, and yeah. it's like if you put cash, if you if you buy a brand new car, you know, you put thirty thousand out for it. And that car depreciates every single day that you drive it. As soon as you yeah. drive it off the lot, it depreciates. So yeah. it's like you could put the the when you use credit and you only you only you put so much up to get it, the not only are you saving the money that you could that you would have put out buying it cash, but you could put that money into something else. Yeah. And that could then potentially make you more money or just, you know, use that money for other stuff that you need Type in shit. general. Yeah. So yeah. it, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong because I would say credit <laughs> is definitely uh, it can get scary sometimes for, for the, sure. if it's in the wrong hands. Yeah. Um. So I, you know, I understand that credit isn't for everybody. Yeah. But it, I would say it's definitely something that it, it can make your life a lot easier. Yeah. And give you more opportunities. Yeah. I just I remember hearing that, bro. <laughs> I remember him saying, "Good credit, having ass bitch." You know, how young <laughs> black youngs would be talking. And yeah. I just remember like. Damn, that's not a very good diss. Like, <laughs> like that's a good thing. That's a compliment. But, bro. but at the end of the day, you gotta think about this. Who who else is a celebrity and got cash like Black Youngster? Like, yeah. They, not most people just got cash sent around to go not to not have yeah. good credit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Oh man. So how can how can like someone I guess you kinda already explained how someone can help a, or how credit can help someone like get a business and stuff, but uh what is the difference between business credit and personal credit? And like how do you go about obtaining each one so personal credit it just it's tied to your personal name so yeah. uh, if you apply for you know a, a vehicle that is going to be in your personal name they got to pull your personal credit everything like that um whereas and that's attached to your social security number whereas okay. on the business side this is attached to your business mm -hmm. so if you have an llc um S, you know whatever it is that you have yeah um it's attached to the ein number so gotcha. that's that's like the social for, for the like business. a business, yeah. Yeah, so the thing is, like, where a lot, why a lot of people leverage business credit is because, um, like, when you when you utilize credit cards, if do you ever, well, do you have, do you have any credit credit mm -hmm. credit cards right now? Yeah, yeah. So do you ever pay attention to like your utilization rate at all? Yeah. So your utilization rate is a major factor on the personal side. Yeah. Like, if you go any, if you exceed thirty yeah. percent, your score is gonna drop. Right. Whereas on the business side, they understand that you need debt to invest into the business. Yeah. So you don't get penalized for carrying balances and having high utilization. Mm. Like you have X amount of time to pay it off, but you don't get penalized for it. Right. And it doesn't report, everything that happens on the business side doesn't report on your personal side. Got you. So that's why it's good to have that separation between the two. Yeah. And, you know, start establishing credit for your business right. so that you don't have to, you know, mix the two and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that is that really helped my credit was when I did first get the credit card, I've, I've been keeping it at 30% and yeah. less for the whole time. So yeah. it's been just like slowly going up actually kind of quickly it seems like do you know the up. due date and the statement date for those cards yeah that's good okay here's my question though right this is what i don't understand because i have mine just auto pay right it just auto pays itself but it doesn't always fucking auto pay and i have it to where it's supposed to pay the entire balance right yeah it doesn't always do that though why so what what company is it uh uh fuck what's the main one um they got quite a, there's like capital one capital one is it, is it capital one platinum Hell no. That's not, you know, that's that's, I'm going to say, that's not, <laughs> like, not, that's not like the entry was. It was like Quicksilver or Venture One. Yeah, I think it's like a Quicksilver. Quicksilver. So is it silver? No. No, I mean, shoot. Either, so as, you, as you're looking at that, so a lot of times, like, I don't know if I have it. the way these banks make money, chill. <laughs> so the way oh, these, it is a platinum. It's platinum? Yeah, it is platinum. Okay, okay. I got that platinum card. I got that platinum. 
have so, hey, I would say you gotta get a different one, man, because you don't get no <laughs> rewards for that one. That one, it was good to have. I think it does have rewards. The platinum, the platinum one credit, Capital One don't have rewards. Really? No, it might be a different one that you might have though. It says platinum on it. If it's platinum, it's platinum. Damn. Yeah. Oh, it's it's platinum colored. No, nah, it'll be like blue. Yeah, it's like, the, like red, the back is red a little bit, like the lining of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, so this, damn if, thing. they lied to me then. If you have good history with them, just go apply, apply for the Quicksilver one. That one gives you rewards for every dollar that you spend. Oh, okay, bet. But the thing is with um, what, what are we going back to again? Shit. Oh, uh, auto pay. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know why that might be a specific issue, but what you got to consider is like a lot of these the way these banks make money off of us using credit cards is paying interest. Mm. So whatever the the reason why I asked like the due date and the statement date. So the due date. Is when I tell people like the minimum payment is due. Like you, your credit card limit might be like two thousand, three thousand, and your minimum balance might be like fifty dollars, sixty dollars, mm-hmm. something like that. And so a lot of people they say, you know, they they try to all right, as long as I pay the minimum, I'm cool. Yeah. But then that statement date comes, and then whatever balance you have left, that's what gets reported to your credit report, and that's what raises and lowers your credit utilization. But whatever that balance is, is what you have to pay interest on. So that's how a lot that's how these banks make money is by you mm. paying interest. So that's one thing. I'm not saying that's exactly what it is because I don't know the exact situation without, you know, looking yeah. at it or anything like that. I guess I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, the way that you'll find out the due date and the statement date is just by calling the number on the back of each credit card. Uh-huh. And it's like, hey, you know, quick two minute, three minute call. Like, hey, I just want to know my due date and my statement date. Yeah. And so, like I said, the due date is when you want to pay that minimum balance. And then the statement date is when you want to pay it down either in full or at least below 30 percent. I got you. See, I always just pay it in full. Yeah, on my do due that date. too. Yeah, but this is where people get messed up at. So uh-huh. it's like the due date. You might because so you made mention of having on auto pay, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a like with the Capital One. Let me get, let me guess. Like your due date is like the 27th, 28th, something like it's that. It's like beginning of the month, actually. Beginning of the month. So yeah. your statement date's like it's typically like three, three or five between three and five days after the due date. Uh-huh. So where people mess up at is they'll they'll pay the balance in full right on uh-huh. that due date. Uh-huh. But then whatever you spend in between that time period of that statement date before it closes. That's what that that balance right there is what's gonna get reported to the credit report either way. Mm. So that's why you gotta know two of them. Even if you pay it in full on that due date, you still gotta pay attention to that statement date. Got you. That makes sense. Yeah. I think for the most part, usually I do. I don't really use it that often, so I might may have slid in there, you know, yeah. on that one. But I didn't know that though, so now now I now know, you know that to pay attention to. Now you know. So how do you deal with people? Because a lot of times, like <clears throat> especially like uh, people that do credit courses and stuff like that. They always they kind of get that that label like oh that shit's a scam like how do you kind of deal with that and like how do you how, what would you say to someone that would say that to you? Man, so I think like courses in general it's like it's since COVID like they, everybody was trying to do a course at one point so it's yeah. kind of like courses as itself kind of got labeled as a scam. Yeah. But I would say for me like I've never been labeled as a scam you know a specific having conversation you know with credit mm-hmm. and um, and the reason why I think that is is because I don't just look to you know make money s- make money out of it yeah. like at the end of the day you know I do it to make money but for sure. I look to provide value so right. it's like all right, I'm a, we're going to talk on the phone and before I even tell you what it is you know that I do service wise like, alright let me see what you have on your credit report um, see what your situation is and what you're trying to do mm-hmm. and then you know based off of that because um, you may not even need my service yeah, yeah yeah so like that one time we talked yeah you know i yeah, sure i didn't charge you it's like no, i just yeah. gave you game and you yeah. apply some stuff and you yeah. see the results so um i think that's one thing that a lot of people don't do is like they just sell like a lot of people have good products and services but they're mm-hmm. just so quick to sell, sell and make a buck off of it rather yeah. than seeking what somebody actually needs yeah. so i think me taking the time to see what people situ because everybody's situation is different yeah and everybody's wants and needs are different yeah and so when i well, i feel like when i take the time to to seek out what somebody needs wants in their situation it kind of like it kind of takes away like the scam look aw- away from me for sure and that's one thing that i definitely want to commend you on and recommend all the people to go to you for that type of stuff is because that was the vibe that i got i've had people that have tried to get me with the credit stuff before. Yeah. And I've been interested, you know, but the first thing that I also hear is like, oh yeah, it's going to cost this much for this and this <laughs> and that. And I'm just like, okay, never mind, you know, but that right, was right, the right. one thing that like was different and that stood out about w- what you did. You know what I'm saying? We literally hopped on a call and we talked about it and you literally told me like, I really don't even think you you need my services. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if you want like help getting some of the like, because I think I did have like two negative things on there. You were mm-hmm. like, if you want help getting those off, then that's something I could help you do. But you really don't need my help with any of this. Like you're pretty right. much in a good spot. You just need to get credit pretty yeah. much like, you know, so like that. And that helped me, you know, that's pretty much all I needed was, and, but somebody else would have been like, charge me $150 <laughs> to tell me that they don't fucking, I don't need their help. And that all I need to do is just go fucking get a credit card basically. Yeah. Like, 
So I appreciate that. And, and that was one thing. That's why I would like anybody that would ever reach out to me, you know, no one ever does. But if somebody ever did reach out to me, like that would be the first person that I would try to recommend would be you just Respect. because I understand that like you're actually trying to help people. I mean, you need you got to make you some money, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, There's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But it's about helping people with you. And, that, and I thought right. that. So that's what's I up. like that. So what are some of the dangers of credit? The dangers of credit is just the debt. Yeah. A lot of people, they, they, they get, let's say you get a credit card, you get 10,000 to, you yeah. know, to somebody that's a lot at one point. So yeah. it's like, if you don't have a purpose of what you're going to do, once you get this amount of credit, amount of funding, things like that, a lot of people may just go spend it on, you know, BS that they don't really need mm-hmm. or something that they may not even be serious about. Like they may be, you know, have a high at the moment, like, oh, I want to do this business and everything like that. Then once they invest into it and, you know, things just don't, things go south and they just leave it alone. Um, that's where people get caught up in trouble is yeah. just because at the end of the day, it's, it's not just free money. Like you got to pay it back, but it's just a matter of like knowing what you're going to do with it before you get it. Yeah. Do you think credit companies like intentionally target people that like they think are going to default on their, on their credit loans? I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say intentionally, but I would say like, I would say they intentionally like give you higher interest rates. Yeah. But that's just more, I don't, I don't that's just with anything. So yeah, I got you. What are some of the ways that, like, what are some of the best ways that someone can repair their credit? One of the best ways somebody can repair their credit is it takes a lot of time. That's 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 what uh, that's the reason why I charge for the service. I spent like credit repair itself. I would say two going on three years of just learning. Yeah. And if you really want to learn it, like just diving in and understanding consumer law because mm-hmm. there are laws that are put in place by Congress mm-hmm. that protect us from all these credit reporting agencies, so right. like TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Like, believe it or not, like what they do, like it's a scam. It's crazy because. Yeah. If, if I were to ask you, like, all right, look, if you give me your personal information yeah, um, and I sell it to another company that we that you have no idea about, yeah. would you be okay with that? Yeah, no. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. And so based off of that, like, understanding what laws they violate to us as consumers, mm-hmm. that's how you can get things removed. And so mm-hmm. just understanding consumer law uh, of credit and how we're protected as consumers is how you can get negative items removed. So what would you be doing if it wasn't, like, credit? Like if it wasn't credit and this kind of like business side of stuff or, or if maybe just like what you're doing in business now, what else do you think you'd be doing? Is there another business venture that you think you'd like to start or Man. do you think you'd probably just do like a nine to five or? I definitely could see myself doing a nine to five. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's just, I know me, I had my experience with it and I just, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. So I'm like, no matter what, even, even, uh, even though there were bad moments and times in business, it was like, yo, I stick, I stuck with it. Yeah. And so it, business is going to be it regardless. Um, if it wasn't for credit, it will, I don't know exactly what it would be, but it would be some form uh, of service that could be provided to others. Cause mm-hmm. that's what I, that's one thing I learned in business. Um, there's so many different skills that you can learn, you know, just through reading books, you know, it sounds lame, cliche, but that's really where, facts, a, though, that's yeah. where a lot of knowledge is at, yeah. reading books, uh, you know, watching podcasts like this, because you brought yeah. people on here that, that give a lot of game. You know, yeah. they might not give it a lot intentionally, but there's a little bit here and there that you can piece together. Like, For dang, sure. they did that. I can do that, too. Right. Um, but what I came across is that providing a service into, like, learning a skill set and providing a service to others is, one, uh, it's a low cost to you mm-hmm. with a high yield. Mm-hmm. And so that's one thing that, you know, led me from shoes to this. Yeah. Shoes is like you got to consistently invest, 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 invest. Yeah, yeah. And it's not guaranteed that you're going to sell it every single right. day, month, everything like right. that. But whereas this, I learned a skill set one time. Yeah, I have to continuously learn. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can set my price or whatever I want to set it at. I don't have to compete with others. Like you're, you're paying for the time that I spent learning it. Yeah. Uh, the results that I'm going to get you and where you're going to be at afterwards. Like right. to me. What, what I charge people is a small investment to the future that they can have. They can go out after they, you know, come to me, pay for services. They can go out and get forty, fifty thousand dollar car that they've been wanting. Uh, right. No money down. You know, I have right. a video on how I got that Jeep out there with no money down. Yeah. Um, what else? You can get a new business where you can make, you know, starting out four or five, six figures, you know, yeah. just off of getting your credit right. So right. Um, that's one thing that I would say if it, if it wasn't credit, it would be I don't know exactly what, but it would be another service. Another service type of thing. Another service. Ter- is service this what you're thing. passionate about? I would say it is what I'm passionate about because it's it's a it's a continuous learning thing. I always I love learning since yeah. I was young. Yeah. Um. I've loved numbers. Like yeah. that was my favorite uh, subject growing up was math. Math, really? No, yeah. Damn. <laughs> that was my favorite subject was numbers. So, um, there's a lot of numbers with credit. Yeah. Not just that, but it's something that opens the avenue to other things. So like it opened up the avenue for me doing car rentals. So. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I never thought I would do that, but just credit gives you opportunities. And so being passionate about that and knowing what we could do for others, it, it definitely is something that I enjoy. So what would you say is like your, uh, your end goal or like what you want to do for like your career? You know, is this kind of like it or what is your end goal with this? Business wise or what like the businesses that I have right now specifically? Yeah. Business wise. Business wise, man, I, I'm not going to sit here and try to make nothing up. Like I kind of, I know what I want to do. But I, I, my main focus is on these businesses because I, I named them each af, after my daughters. Okay. And so my main objective is to get them to a point to where it's like, all right, we got, you know, uh, money coming in passively, whatever it is. You know, right now, car rentals is really hitting for me and my family. Yeah. What do you um, mean by you named them after each of your daughters? So, I've, like, my credit business is Avia Enterprises. My daughter's name is Avia. Okay. And then my car rental business is YS Enterprises. Gotcha. Which, her name is Yana Sarai. Oh, okay. And so I named it after this. So my main objective is to build these two up, whether they do it or not. I'm not forcing them to do, you know, take part in the business. But yeah. I mean, shoot, if I was a child and I had, you know, the plan, you know, a six, seven figure business by the time I was 18, shoot, I'm yeah. going all in. I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep running the play, running the right. blueprint. Yeah. So that I would love to do that. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you, like, all right, this is my goal with business. Maybe I need to sit down and think about it. But mm -hmm. right now, it's just more so I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I'm just running the play, running the course. That's For it. sure. That's really that was all. That, that's really all that matters, you know. what yeah. I'm saying because people ask me that sometimes too. Like, what's my end goal? And like, I honestly don't know. You yeah. know what I mean? But I know that right now, like, this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love, and like, yeah. this is what I want to do. You know what I mean? So maybe maybe <clears throat> this will be it. You know, right. maybe not. Maybe 20 years from now, I may decide. You know what I'm saying? I want to switch and do something else. But so for right much now, changes this is a it. lot too. Because like even for you, example, like with the podcast, like you probably thought the first person that you did it with was gonna be it. Thought it was gonna be it. Changed the yeah. second person. You thought that was gonna be it. Things yeah. changed. So it's like you gotta always adjust and yeah. uh, be willing to. You always have to be willing to adjust whether whether Facts. it falls aligned with what Facts. you thought it was gonna happen. So as we kind of get to the end here, man, like what's next for you, man? What can the people expect to see see from Zavon, from Z Private, and and from man Z Private? <laughs> 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 yeah, the <laughs> man. Oh, but a lot of people. I, I would definitely this year. Um, I'm focusing on doing more stuff like this. You know, yeah. it was definitely, you know, uh, I appreciate you for yeah, inviting bro. me on here. Hell yeah, most Because definitely. I'm not going it was something that I knew I wanted to do. Yeah. But I don't know if I would have reached out to somebody to be like, hey, can I can I come on there? I appreciate that too, bro. Yeah. I, I hate it when people do that. <laughs> I don't hate it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if you take your shot, you know what I mean? Sometimes I may not know and I I've had guests, you know what I'm saying, that yeah. have reached out. But for the most part, bro, I hate when people reach out because most people don't have anything to fucking offer. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if you have something to offer, I'm all for you reaching out. But like yeah. a lot of people just don't have anything to offer besides like they can come up here and say some stupid shit, some funny shit. Yeah. They can catch some views, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool with that sometimes. But like right. I got to at least know you. You know what I mean? If we're yeah. just going to come on here and just talk about some stupid shit, we got to at least be boys so that we can catch a vibe. We you can, know? Yeah, we got to at least have something to talk about. I'm something. not going to lie. Me and Kyra, you know Kyra, yeah, my yeah, lady. Yeah. Uh -huh. We were saying it because whenever you first started, we watch, we watch it all the time. Yeah. And whenever like either I would watch it, she's like, oh, put it on the TV so I yeah. can watch it. Or she'd be watching like, I'll throw it on the TV so I can watch yeah. it. That's and then we, we've, been, we've been counting our days. She was like, man, what, I wonder, wonder if he's going to invite you. I'm like, Shoot, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and so, uh, so whenever you hit me up, it was just like, oh, shit, say less. I'm in. I think yeah. I hit you back like pretty quick. Yeah. And then um, so but going back to the original question, as far as like, yeah, definitely. I, I appreciate that for, you know, for allowing sure. me to come on here and inviting me on here. But uh, that's definitely what I want to focus on a lot more. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, I do, I do that right now with a lot of free content, putting out information. Right. So I definitely want to put my face out there more because, you know, what I know is definitely a lot of information that people need to know. Yeah. And so that's one thing I want to focus on is put myself out there a lot more with credit. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, I, I may mention a couple of times with car rental space. So I'm definitely this year I have, you know, I don't, I don't want to say a lot, like, but I'm definitely going to have more vehicles out there and feeling the need of people who need to rent out cars and something nice. like that. That's it's fun up, and it's cool. Yeah. So go ahead and shout out where the people can find you, how the people can get in touch with you and, and everything on everywhere. So again, my name is Zayvon. You can find me on Instagram at Zayvon Griffin. Um, and on TikTok, Zayvon Griffin, I think it's a period at the end. But yeah, uh, follow me on Instagram. That's where I post a lot of my content at. If you need any services or want to learn anything more about credit or if you need help with your credit, uh, you know, just shoot me a DM. More than, be more than happy to hop on the phone with you, you know, see what you got going on and how I could help. 
For sure, man. And all those links are going to be posted down below in the description, as always. Um, we appreciate you guys for tuning in today. We appreciate my boy Z for pulling up. I uh, hope you guys were able to learn something, something that you can incorporate in your life. Uh, make sure that you guys go hit that comment section down below. Make sure that you guys tune in to next week's episode. Episodes are going to be streaming weekly. we got a lot of dope stuff coming. Make sure that you guys hit that subscribe. We appreciate you guys for watching and listening and all that you guys do. Everybody hates Jabber. We out. Lit. That was lit. That was it, bro.